precious arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. All right, so curse is a man, another man, draw you away from the Lord. All right, verse 6 says, For you shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see what good coming, but shall have the parched place in the wilderness, and a salt land, and not inhabit it. I mean, it's not, nothing's going to grow. Everything you touch is going to be destroyed. Because again, you need to think about our Lord and Savior. All right, trusting in man. Verse 7, it says, Bless the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. So you got to trust in the Lord. You can't worry about Donald Trump and whoever they put in office. It's the Lord. It's him. All right? Verse 7, Bless the man that trusts in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. What should be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spread it out her roots by the river, and should not see when he cometh, but at least shall be green, and should not be kept for the year of drought, this shall cease from yielding fruit. So that's everybody right now who's walking around with this coronavirus thing, is going to mind their business, not even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Not even worry about it. Because at the end of the day, they do what they're supposed to do. So they're not worried about a virus. All right? Verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitfully above all things and dashly wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the ram, even to get every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. All right. Let's go to Genesis 3 now. All right. Let's get into this Satan character. All right. Back in the Garden of Eden, he's the reason that man been dying ever since. All right. But it could have been all man had to do was just listen. All right. All we had to do was listen, but no. Brought death for mankind, brought women into the conditions that they have to go through as far as having children, all these things. All right. Genesis 3 and verse 1. Genesis 3 and verse 1. All right. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, Yea, had God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? That's the thing, Satan be slick with it too. Did God say you cannot eat of every chin in there? Like, you know what, what the conversation was. He's always in the mix. Verse 2 And the woman says to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you should not eat of it. Then he said, Touch it, lest ye die. So this should be the end of the conversation. That's basically what the Lord told him. This should be the end of the conversation. But no. All right. Verse 4 And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. That was the first lie ever told. Verse 5. For well, God don't know that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes should be open and you should be as God's knowing good and evil. How God not going to know that? He created the devil. Again, we choose to listen to the devil. Nothing but disaster could come from that. Verse 6. And woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree did desire to make one wise. He took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also her husband with her, and he did eat. So it was, she was going by what she see. She was like, oh, wow. Again, pay attention to this message because he took it to the woman first. He didn't take it to the man. Satan is crafty. Verse 7, it says, And the eyes of them both were open, and knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Let's skip down to verse 9. All right. Before this, they even know it was naked. So let's, let's let that establish that right there. Verse 9, it says, And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereas I command thee that thou shouldst not eat? Again, like the Lord sees everything. Verse 12, And the man said, The woman who thou gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So now he's going to blame the woman. Verse 13, it says, the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the servant beguiled me, and I did eat. So everybody's pointing fingers at each other, but it all go back to who? Satan, the great deceiver. All right? Verse 14, it says, and the Lord God said to the serpent, because of how done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly should I go, and thus should I eat all the day of thy life. All right? That's the punishment that Satan got. Skip down to verse 17. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, and to Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall I eat of it all the days of thy life. So a man got to go out and work, sweat, work hard, just to make ends meet. Especially if somebody a man like me, black man. All right, verse 18 it says, Thorns also a thistle shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. 
and I swear thy face should I eat bread till thou return to the ground. For either was thou taken, for dust thou art, and to dust shall thy return. So again, that you know when you die, you go back to the dust. You don't go off to no heaven nowhere. All right? The Bible. Basic instruction before living eternity. Part three, the great deceiver. All right? Let's go to Genesis 4 now. All right? So again, Adam and Eve brought death on mankind because they talked to Satan eyes open and man they died every since all right since man was dying we're going to show you the first death all right genesis 4 and verse 1 genesis 4 and verse 1 all right the story of cain and abel all right genesis 4 verse 1 it says that adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and buried cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord and she again and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground and offered it to the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the first of the first length of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect to Abel and to his offering. But to Cain and to his offering, he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So again, the Lord didn't have respect for Cain's offering. But again, the Lord is merciful. All you gotta do is do it right, right? Just, just do it, just make it up, just, you know, got a chance, redeem yourself. Verse six, and the Lord said to Cain, why art thou wrong, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted. If thou doest not well, sin light at the door. And to thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So he let him know, hey, don't worry about it, you got everything, just make it up, all right? Do what you're supposed to do. Verse eight, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, and I am my brother's keeper. That is deep, his own, his own brother. Verse 10, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried up to me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which I opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. All right? The Bible. Basic instructions before living eternity. Part three, the great deceiver. Let's go to Psalms 55 now. All right? Psalms 55 and verse 22. I'm telling you, Satan is, is, is no good. I'm telling you, he just, once you get a in you, he had you killing your own people, your own family members. I mean, it's just, it's messed up. You know how much hatred this spirit has. All right, Psalms 55 and verse 22, and basically letting you know to cast all your burdens on the Lord. All right, Psalms 55, verse 22, it says, "Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He should never suffer the righteous to be moved." Verse 23, it says, "But thou, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction." Bloody, deceitful men should not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. All right? And we have to trust in him. We can't go by what we see. We got to walk by faith and not by sight. All right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 1. All right? 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 1. All right? This is talking about the power of God, right? That's what you need, again, to fight the enemy, to fight the opposition, which is Satan, the devil, Lucifer, and any other name they has, all right? 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 1, and it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. All right? Because again, Jesus has been preached for the longest, and people, he still get the respect. Even in 2020, he still don't get the respect. People still don't believe in Jesus. 
And a lot of us, my people, they didn't know this word. They don't still don't believe in Jesus. But verse 3 says, But by God's be here, it's here to be a man lost. Verse 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. But God who commanded the light to shine in the darkness has shined in the heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Verse 7, it says, But we have this treasure in, in earthly vessels, that the efficacy of the power may be of God and not of us. The Bible. Basic instructions before living eternally. Part 3, The Great Deceiver. So let's go to Deuteronomy 11. we got three more after this. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 1. Verse 1, and basically this is just warnings, okay? The Lord always gave us warnings, all right? It just, we don't take heed to the warnings is we have problems. And then we want to call him again, but then he told you X, Y, and Z. But you didn't pay attention to it, all right? You're like the days of Noah. They didn't pay attention to the whole world play. Besides, those that was in that, on that ark, all right? Deuteronomy 11. And verse 1, Deuteronomy 11 and verse 1, it says, Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. So I'll tell you, Satan don't fight, he don't play fair. All right, you need to judge everything always. That's how you're going to fight him. Skip down to verse 16, it says, Take heed to yourself. That your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heavens that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless you perish quickly from off the good land with the Lord give you. So even when it we go through droughts in the land, there's a reason for that. Because again, the Lord be mad. He'd be mad. That's why the land that we have a drought, they don't rain for a certain period of time, and certain things like that happen. Verse 18, therefore shall you lift these my words in your hearts and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontless between your eyes. All right. Verse 19, and you shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thy house or when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children. And the land which the Lord swear to your fathers to give them as days of heaven upon the earth. For you shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. So again, we have the upper hand. If we follow what thus saith the Lord, we can fight the devil. Spiritual wickedness and high place. We can do all those things. All right? Let's go to Luke 10 now. All right, Luke 10 and verse 19. All right? Judgment. And the Lord told us that we can tread on scorpions as well, too. All right? Luke 10 and verse 19. All right, Luke 10. And verse 19, and it says, Behold, I give unto you powers to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of enemies, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So again, the Lord give us the power to fight Satan, to fight the enemy. That's through the word of God. Skip, we're going to skip up to verse 16. All right, verse 16, it says, He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despiseth me, he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. Again, that's Satan. Verse 17, it says, And the seven returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to, uh, to, uh, to us through thy name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's exactly what happened. He fell from heaven. But he's trying to bring as many people as possible where he's going to end up, which is the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. We're going to skip up to verse 13 now. All right? It says, Woe to thee, Jerusalem, woe to thee, Bethesda. For the mighty works had been done entirely in sin, which had been done in you, they had a great while of the repentance, sin, and sackcloth, and ashes. All right? But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. Again, the Lord is not playing. You want to serve the devil you want to? You want to 
play with the devil, get in the bed with him, and 